welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside more guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy, and it's the special return of an all-timer on this channel. This is Wallow Al J Pox. Wah! This is a brew from Patreon subscriber Luca. Almost two years ago on the channel, March 2022, I was given a version of Al J Pox, and it was well received. People loved it. It was a, a top all-time viewed video for a while. I had a lot of fun making Wallowiji noises throughout the league. What this deck actually does, though, is it's a pox deck for one. Small pox, each player loses life, discards a card, sacks a creature, sacks a land. It's been a while since I played pox on the channel, but this used to be one of my backdoor favorites. Like, uh, everyone was like, yeah, Boston Roll, Bank Control, and pox. Those were the two things I was known for. It's been a while, but we're back. Small pox squeezes everybody a little bit on basically every axis. It's hard to play the game if you don't have lands or cards in your hand. The smallpox is supplemented on the land denial by Wasteland and Life from the Loam. We also have a Rashadden port and a Tabernacle in here. We're just coming for you in every direction. But Seiju can also kill certain lands in a pinch. Supporting the hand denial, we've got Thoughtseize and Him to Turok and Dark Ritual to accelerate them. Additional squeezing from Planeswalkers Liliana the Veil and Ashiok Game Ender. Spells and abilities your opponent's control can't cause them to search their library. Yeah, get out of here. Lorian revealed, Troll of Kazadoom, see you never. And the thing that makes this really special, Spreading Algae, one green enchantment. Enchant Swamp. When enchanted creature becomes tapped, destroy it. When Spreading Algae is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Spreading Algae to its owner's hand. We are lucky that right now in Legacy, Swamps are at kind of an all-time high. Orcish Bowmaster, any deck that wants to cast that needs some Swamps. And if your opponent doesn't provide them for you, Urborg, Tomb of Yawgmoth. Each land is a swamp in addition to its other land types. And we have a crop rotation package to go get that thing. And then it's just a matter of time. We're already beaten up on their lands with Smallpox, Wasteland, Vaseju, etc. And if they tap it, they lose it. And then it, Algae comes back, and then we enchant the next land. There's also a fun little secret in this deck. The Rashadden board, not just for Mana Denial, also, the wording on Spreading Algae is when Enchanted Land becomes tapped. It's not when it's tapped for Mana. You can force them to tap their land if they don't want to. This is a slow, miserable, mana denial prison deck, and I'm here for it. Basically, the only ways to win are Retrofitter Foundry, Urza Saga, and Curse Scroll, at least in the main deck. In the sideboard, I have two Passageway Seers. This is a black initiative creature. It can conveniently be cast off land Dark Ritual Mox Diamond. You can turn one this thing. I waffled for a bit whether I want Passageway Seer in the main over Ashiok. Then I thought about doing a 1-1 one -one split. Then my concern ultimately is that Passageway Seer, if your opponent gets the initiative, you can basically never get it back. If you get the initiative and then pox out the board, you'll eventually win just from initiative triggers. But in Orcish Bowmaster specifically, which otherwise this deck is really strong against because very few of our permanents care about it and we don't draw any cards. But Bowmaster making two bodies, getting around an edict, poking for one, taking the initiative, and then you're just behind because of your own stupid card. I think this is better in the sideboard for control matchups and initiative matchups, where you could take the initiative just by resolving this thing. That was my thought about that. And I like Ashiok quite a bit in the current metagame where people are cutting lands for Lord of the Rings cycle cards. Yeah, that's the deck. Those are my thoughts about it. This is Lucas Algae Pox. Wah! 3 for 1 trading is having a Black Friday sale that runs Wednesday, November 22nd through Monday, November 27th. Their online store has a fantastic selection of high end magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy, and old school players. There are special sales each day during the promotion. Sign up at shop.341trading.com to be the first to know when their Black Friday specials start and when new sale items go online. I'm on the draw in round one. Unfortunate Rashad and Port one lander here. That is the cost of tech lands. Otherwise, this Dark Ritual starts not bad. I will mulligan this. 
Okay. Uh, this hand gets things started with a turn one loan, and then we move forward from there. I'm going to bottom a Besaju. Loam is the engine that breaks parity on all the pox effects. And we're against Delver. All right. Delver is a matchup where if you get the hooks in, they have very little way to get back out. But they are pretty good at not getting hooked in the first place. But they're a deck built on leveraging tiny resources. And we're a deck in denying resources in lots of tiny ways. Oh, yeah. Well, they bobbled that and they saw it. I'm going to play my Bayou and my Diamond. We got the Yikes in the chat. I'm going to discard Baseju. And who did they bobble? Okay, they did see the smallpox. We got a Yikes in the chat. I'm not going to play into Daze if I can avoid it, though. I'm just going to loam this land back and make sure we're still rocking. Okay, pass the turn. That might have been cowardly, but dazing, full, full countering my smallpox is not something I'm interested in. Delver triggers, Bobble triggers. Delver did not flip. In the land they saw is Besaju. Uh, they might try to waste me to keep me off Black Black, but that's not a long term strategy. Like, wasting me into Life from the Loam is pretty mid. A third Bobble. They bobbled me again. They do have a second land. They draw for Bobble. I draw for Turn. I'm not going to Dredge Loam here. I have lands to make. Ooh, where's a saga? What's up? I like that one. Okay, Urza Saga, get another engine crank in here. And I'm going to fire the pox. First test of the game. Wow, that just resolved like nothing. Okay. Uh, the Seiju into the graveyard. I'm going to sack the Bayou. And they discarded a tropical island. So we got two lands out of that, ultimately, including a splash color. Okay, they're wastelanding me. That's actually awesome, because now Loam can just repick up all these things. If they have force of negation right now, the loam is actually I'm actually in a ton of trouble. A okay, saga, saga bayou are gonna be my targets. I'm not gonna target the Yavamaya. They showed me a tropical island. And we're not doing that. I'm not turning on their deck for them. And they are they're in the squeeze here. I can edict a Merc Tide. And that is what they have. Just a little 3 3, buddy. I'm not gonna dredge loam. I would like spells. Oh, what's up, Tabby? There's a saga. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. I'm just going to send it right now. If they have force, it works on their turn as well. Another wasteland. They're treading water from behind, just picking off my lands when I am successfully wasting. Not a great strat. I could be dredging loam looking for my own wastelands, because if I can get them into the wasteland squeeze and just tab lock them, that's actually great. I am going to dredge loam here. Found a wasteland. Wasteland, Rashad and Port, Basaju. They can daze this, but that also sets them back a land. Okay, daze has happened. And I'm not going to pay here. And I will just play the Tabernacle, get the squeeze going. If they want to drop a Murktide here, it's going to cost them their DRC. There's the Valk. And now they basically have to counter Loam every turn of the game forever. Or at least until I'm out of life points. Wasteland, or Schadenport, or Zasaga. Same targets. Wasteland's in here. I am going to make them pay for their channeler. And then I'll waste the other land. Okay. Send in the lightning bolt upstairs. Or maybe it's better if they just don't have red. Yeah, I'm just going to waste the bulk. They are in the garbage here, though. Port does not activate at a time that is useful in denying them mana for Tabernacle. I mean, lands are the best thing they could draw. If they can tempo ahead of everything I'm doing here, right, Life from Loam again, Wasteland, hit the trap, make them fetch, make them use it. Though, I mean, if the top two cards of their deck are all lands, or if they play a basic, all of those things are concerns. All right, just miss your land drop this turn, and we'll be okay. Okay, Channeler's attacking. I'm down to six. This is getting tight. No! Uh, we actually died a lightning bolt here. And I'm going to stay with the plan. Loam target wasteland and some other stuff. Wasteland. Hit the bulk. Please don't bolt me. Okay. Mr. Landrop. Mr. Landrop. Don't play a spell. Mr. Landrop. Moment of truth, kids. Oh, they passed the turn. Uh, force beats me here. I finally found two wastelands in a loam, which means I don't have to loam every turn now. 
But if they can counter right now. Okay, Wasteland's in. We got them in the tab lock. They need to draw Volcanic Island plus Lightning Bolt before I kill them. That's their sequence out of this game. Okay, they're passing. I could take a normal draw step now. Always exciting tension when you're a Pox Wizard. Urza Saga get in. Start winning this game. Okay, they're just passing the turn again. Ooh, Thoughtseize. That's... Is that risky, or is it just, like, fine and normal? Uh, I'm going to play Bayou, and I am not going to play this Thoughtseize. I didn't play the second Saga, because I am under my own Tabernacle that I have to respect at least a little bit. Oh no, do you have the Bolt? I did, unfortunately, mill my only Pithing Needle, so I can't just spike this Flooded Strand. Right, I would like to keep this Construct, please. Not going to Drudge Loam. Smallpox, hello. Make a construct. I think I just want a Mox Diamond here, actually. Just more mana, especially if I'm about to try to pox. Mox Diamond, discard this Yavamaya that I refuse to give them access to. Another Saga. And attack for four. And then Dark Ritual, Smallpox. Bang. I don't think two is different than three against their deck, but one land is the entire difference between Lightning Bolt and not casting that. Oh, heck yeah, they had to force it. They lost a Brainstorm. I could Thoughtseize here. Is there anything in their deck that does one damage? They would have bolted me by now if they had access to that. I am not going to Thoughtseize. Second land. Uh-oh. Are we suddenly Merc Tiding? Oh no, they just fetched and conceded. Maybe they realized they were out of fetchables. Is that what just happened? They seemed excited to start playing cards, and then suddenly, not. Heck yeah, Pox versus Delver. I love Assassin's Trophy. Nemesis Trap is just for initiative. This card is really funny, and I'm glad I got to put it in a deck. I hope it comes up at some point, but it's not for this matchup. Plague Engineer can name Human, and that's effective versus Dragon's Way Channeler, Delver, and the Questing Fella, Questing Druid. I'm 100% on Assassin's Trophies. The rest of the cards, the Plague Engineers, I'll have to think about. Nihil Spellbomb isn't textless in the matchup, but it's also not that important. And I have Ashiox that do a similar thing. Curse Scroll is my win condition. We're against a low resource deck anyway. I don't need to get cute with multiple copies of Spreading Algae. That's more likely to be stuck in my hand when I need an action spell than it is to actually lock them out because I have Herborg. This is a lot, a lot better against decks with basic lands and a bunch of, like, just a high land count in general, that kind of thing. I'm still even one in, though, because that's what we're doing here. Yeah, I think I'm just off Plague Engineer. Two trophies in, just a little more removal, and run it. Another otherwise reasonable hand with only a colorless mana source. I'm going to mulligan. Uh-oh. This one doesn't do anything. I could crop rotation, but no, no thanks. Okay, here we go. Keep this. I think I have to get rid of the Dark Ritual because I'm already down two cards, and I'm going to send the Yevamaya. The Dark Ritual accelerates my plan, but it also just leaves me completely shields down to a Force of Will. I'd be surprised if this deck even has a basic in it for Assassin's Trophy. They're bobbling me. I'd love to see Life from the Loam here. <laughs> the Dark Ritual that I sent to the bottom anyway. It's here. I'm just going to play Marsh Flats and pass. Brainstorm from the opponent. My deck could just have Bowmaster in it at this point. I think that is kind of antithetical to the vibe. Though it does give me two creatures. If I smallpox, I get to keep the actual Bowmaster, sack the Orc army. That's a little messed up. I'm still going to stay with the classics for now, though. But you can certainly put that card in your deck. Opponent's got another Mishra's Wobble. And that does not give them Delirium. And they are attacking me with their stuff. I'm drawing a card, Retrofitter Foundry. I do like that one. That's a nice kind of thing to just have in play. Fetch my basic swamp. I can also just send an Assassin's Trophy in this turn. Start testing their interaction. Uh, I'm, I am going to play the Retrofitter, actually. We're here. Let's do it. They're bobbling me in response. Deciding if they need to force a will this. Oh, yeah. Force pitching days. Okay. So they either have a lot of respect for that card, and they're willing to throw two counterspells away for it, 
I was right to play around Force in Days, by the way, uh, by both bothering the Dark Ritual and not committing to it once I redrew another one. But they pitched Days, so that's two counter spells gone. Uh, let's see what this turn brings. A Delver. Okay. Oh, Pithing Needle. Fun. Is that fun? Does it do anything? I'm going to play Beseju, and I'm going to cast Dark Ritual, and then float a green and play Smallpox. Oh, wait, can I get... I can get all the way Hellbent here. That plays back into days, but I think that's okay. Okay, I'm going to trophy first, and I'm going to go after the DRC. And now we find out if they have a basic land in their deck. Nope, just Vindicate. Cool. Fetch for a Bayou. What am I going to pay the Needle here? I could also just be completely insulated against days and give up the pay the Needle. Yeah, I think that's... The safer thing. I'm just going to give up on Needle. There's not like an obvious thing I name here. And I want to put them to Daze or Get Obliterated. Or Force or Get Obliterated. Cool. Sack the Beseju. Thing resolved. And they did discard a Daze. I was right. Okay, so there's a Bayou exposed to Wasteland right now that doesn't need to be. Like I fetched and then decided not to do that. Okay, let's draw Life from the Loam right now. Just something to get the ball rolling. Wasteland, I'll take it. Splat. Seeking the Beast in response. Exiled. Surgical Murktide. Okay. I mean, Surgical can strip out my Wastelands, and they have to cast it or they lose it. If they have the land for Murktide in their two-card hand, this is actually going to get really hard. But if they don't, heck yeah. Just a little Delver guy. And they are Surgicaling Wasteland. One card left in their hand. Questing B Druid in exile. Just waiting for the next mana. Can I draw a Smallpox right now? Oh, I actually got Game Ender. Okay, the next land is a solid one. But they do have a threat on board, and I don't. Didn't flip. No! Okay. Questing Druid is live. Yeah, that was a, a really important turn where I needed to draw something good, and they didn't. And now I'm just Ashiok flooded. They are certainly ending the game. Plague Engineer would be my catch-up here, and it's not in the deck. Oh no, the three-drop flood. The games where you have loam versus the games where you don't are, are very different, as we're discovering here. Like one life from the loam in the mix at any point in this game, and we're just we're just pulling ahead, we got all this stuff in play. But instead we don't. I'm ready to concede that. And I changed my mind. I do want the Plague Engineer. And uh, Ashiak not affecting the board matters in this matchup. They do care about their graveyard, and they do a lot of fetching. Uh, I could split them. Or I could just do the thing that is a removal spell. Okay. Let's go. This is a turn one smallpox, which is not like a good play. Uh, but I am gonna keep this hand. I like the wasteland, I like the mox diamond. There's a lot to like about it. But I'm just gonna marsh flats pass. I don't want them to know that I'm playing around days. I don't want them to know what I'm capable of. Don't want any free money on a turn one meltdown. Nothing of the sort, please. Ponder, okay. They did not shuffle their ponder. I'm just going to fire a wasteland in. I'm still going to hide what I can do. Tropical island now. Wasteland again. Kachow. Emergency brainstorm in response. Can we get a brainstorm lock rage quit here? That would be great. Nope. They're continuing to play the game. But they don't have anything. All right. Now I need to find a threat. Him to Tarak. All right. Let's soften that hand up a bit. Pew pew. Days ponder in the graveyard. I don't care about days with my configuration, but the ponder is nice to be rid of. All right, some planeswalker, some <laughs> saw bladeswalker. How about that one? Okay, fetch for a bayou. This one's probably good enough to force if they have it. If she resolves, we're just going to town. They do force pitching a merc tide. Good call. That's just another hymn to Turok. Count it. I didn't even really want to start plussing my hand. Thoughtsies. What you working with? Meltdown, double DRC, lightning bolt. I'm going to take one of the channelers, and this Mox Diamond chilling in my hand looks pretty smart at the moment. No Tring P land. I'll probably redraw with that in the end step. They draw a card from P land. Found another Besage you. Hey yo, ding 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 ding. Nurturing P land, wasteland, wasteland, come back to my hand. Now we're really cooking. I'm going to replay the peatland and pass. 
I have played versions of Pox with exploration in them before, where spots like this are awesome. Yeah. Opponent gives up out of pure misery. Turn seven, I have nothing going on, and they're like, I don't want to play the game. That's how you pox. Wah! The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is now available for pre-order through Coalesce Apparel and will release in early December. These will sell out and take time to restock. The holidays are coming up fast. Place your pre-orders for yourself and the Bosch and Roll fans in your life today. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market with awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll at checkout for 10% off your order at coalesceapparel.shop. I'm on the play with a beautiful 2011 Legacy Liliana the Veil Hand. I'm going to keep this. This is turn one, loan back two lands, turn two, Liliana the Veil, and then I have just infinite fodder to discard. Marsh Flats, Box Diamond, Discard Bayou, Fetch for a Swamp, Life from the Loam, back these two cards. My things are resolving pretty quickly. I hope this is not Reanimator. And if it is, I hope they can't beat Liliana. Ooh, Elvish Spirit Guide in Exile. What are we doing? Is this Oops All Spells? Oh, it's 12 post. Fascinating. Okay, <laughs> this, this Liliana is going to fuck them up. And I am going to dredge Loam because finding Wasteland in this matchup is going to be really important. Okay, uh, they used a Spirit Guide to get this Reclaimer in. This is a two for one and counting. I don't have a wasteland though. If they do get over the top of me, I could be in trouble. That crop rotation on top of my deck that I just milled. Oh, they're playing a tabernacle. Good luck with that. That crop rotation I milled would have been wasteland or shot in port. Hello. Each player discards a card. I'll discard a bayou. I discarded a reclaimer. I'm going to play life from the loam, getting back my two things. And then I'm going to play Rashad and Port as my land for turn and become ungovernable. Oh, are we going to crop rotate for Bajukabog in response? Okay. Oh, Cloud Post, sure. That's probably better. But it's a better target for Rashad and Port also. Tap target land. How about the one that taps for two? Vesuva. All right. I mean, they're doing it here. They're going to have one card left in their hand at the end of my onslaught. And I'm going to be dredging low. I'm looking for that wasteland. Didn't find it. Did find Ashia Game Ender, though. Plus Lily. I'm going to discard Marsh Flats. Play Saga. Play Loam. And then I'll port one of these Cloud Posts and hope it's enough. Hey, they had to use two Spirit Guides just to even do anything. Ah, shit. The One Ring's really freaking good. Oh, no. Uh, I mean, I'm still pretty happy with a Wasteland here, but now we both don't care about Liliana. All right, still dredging loam, looking for that wasteland. Did not find it. Plus Lily. Okay, so I have one to activate, one port. So I can't actually loam this turn if I want to make constructs, which I do. We discarded a second one ring. Port a cloud post. I do have a win cut now, though. That one ring. Damage them. Take them down. I, and I can tutor pithing needle off this saga and turn off the ring. Okay, there is a plan here. Make a construct. Go to my turn. Make a construct. Tutor Needle. Name the One Ring. And they just scoop to that. Nice. Okay. Found the line. Okay. Good to know that they are a dedicated critical mass land deck against my dedicated kill all your land deck. I do like that. They are a Zenith deck. Graft Diggers, Cages, and maybe Assassin's Trophies 100%. Ashiok Game Ender 100%. Nile Spellbomb doesn't matter. I'm going to shave a Spreading Algae again. I'll still leave one in because it is devastating if we get the locks in, but I really need to be killing their lands directly in the early game before they do something like play the one ring, you know, hypothetically. Do I think Graft Digger's Cage is better than like a Dark Ritual here? Curse Scroll doesn't actually kill anything in their deck, but it is one of my only win cons. If I take out Curse Scroll, I have Retrofitter Foundry and Saga Tokens to win the game with. All right, I'm not going to Graft Digger's Cage, just the trophies, just the sinkholes. This deck could play actual sinkhole, a card I have played a lot in box shells on this channel. Okay, uh, him to Tarak, I like. Rashad and Port, I like. I don't like the lack of removal. Or No, I have a trophy. It's fine. This deck does have forest in it, though, if I trophy stuff. Once upon a time, opponent kept seven. Well, you have a Maya. That's good for me, too. Reclaimer's less good for me. Lillian off the top. Ooh, okay. 
I think. I'm just going to play Curse Scroll here and pass the turn. Next turn, I can Dark Ritual, then him plus Trophy. I don't want to just randomly him their six card hand and burn off a mana. Seiju, also a heater in this matchup. Okay, the issue with Assassin's Trophy is I want to kill Cloud Post with it. And I guess I can just play my Bayou and pass. I could also just him to rock them and pass. I think I'm just going to pass here, actually. Because they're going to activate Reclaimer to get a Cloud Post in the end step. Then I can delete it. Oh, Thespian Stage, interesting. Oh, uh, alright, they're working towards the Dark Depths instead. Okay, I'm going to Besage you the... Would I rather hit the Yabamaya? No, it's the, the stage. Alright, I'm going to Besage you the stage. They end up with Greet Mana anyway. I used to Besage you instead of Trophy because I want to be able to Trophy creatures, and Besage you only hits the lands. This Reclaimer will eventually just be a 3-power animal bashing me in. Aetherborn? Oh no. Okay, they're just rotating it away immediately. Too bad. That would have been fun. Ooh, double him to Turok. Put you to put you to nothing. Okay, uh, Dark Ritual. I'm going to lead on a him in case they have Veil of Summer. I just need to be able to respond with Trophy and actually kill something. Bring and Force of Vigor in the graveyard. Let's take another chunk here. Dark Depths in the graveyard. Okay, I did correctly identify their, their goal. If they shove a Dark Depths from hand right now, I'm going to be bummed about it. But if they pass into my turn, which they wouldn't do because I'm a dedicated Wasteland deck. If I can untap with this Assassin's Trophy. And I did. Alright, cool. Even down a Dark Ritual. That lets me Trophy and make a Saga token. Two things that I like doing. Okay, Reclaimer's making a move. Are they still on Team Dark Depths? Or is it time to get Cloud Posts? Here's that. It's time to get Cloud Posts. If I'm going to kill this Cloud Post, I have to do it now. Because of the awkward Dark Ritual situation. That's three, four. Yeah, that works. Okay. Dark Ritual. Assassin's Trophy. Target the Cloud Post. And make a Construct. Okay. I am Hellbent for Curse Scroll. If that becomes relevant. Pithing Needle can poop out name Thespian Stage or Elvish Reclaimer real quick. I got your annoying in the chat. Yeah, I agree. That's what we're here for. Wow, that's the correct answer. Okay, they're rotating away a forest now. They'll probably just Vesuva here. Oh, they had nothing. All right, cool. Draw for turn. Liliana, ooh. Uh, I will enjoy the full breath of my Urza Saga and worry about the Construct later, I think, or the Reclaimer later. Yeah, if I just grab Needle now, Reclaimer's going to die next turn anyway. I'm going to name Thespian Stage with this Needle. Okay, Thespian Stage is turned off, and I'm going to attack for four. Okay, three card hand, three mana to work with. They're going to lose their Reclaimer next turn. They can rotate away their Stage here. If they get a Cloud Post, then they have two of those, and they're untapping into five mana. Oh, they rotated away the Yavimire. Cool. Getting another Post. Oh, they had another Yavimire. Oh, it all makes sense. It's all coming together. I'm drawing for turn. It's a land. I think I attack first and see what they have to say about it. The Liliana versus Rashad and Port's actually interesting here. Like getting the Reclaimer out of the way is nice. They're untapping into six mana though. All right, I'm gonna get the Lily invested. Have you sack a creature? Please don't fail me. Oh no! Shit, that was really good. All right. Veil of Summer. They didn't have it for several turns, but they found one now. They finally got a good exchange in this game, and I have a lethal attack on board, but they have unloaded into a big turn. They could one ring, they could play some big Planeswalker or a stupid Eldrazi here. Something like Primeval Titan, perhaps. Bummer. Yeah, if they just get a couple Glimmer posts, they gain a million life, and it's going to be really hard to get through this thing. Yeah, it turns out the, the Rashad and Port would have been the better play there. And they just get to clear Liliana for free. Come on, deck. A good one. That's not really a good one. I can kill the prime time here. Right, attacking with my creatures. They did not block. They know better. Unfortunately, I am one damage short of winning this game with Curse Scroll right now. Do I even tap a land? Does that matter? If I was going to tap a land, I should have played my Marsh Flats. 
All right, I'll tap the cloud post. I blew it on that Liliana play. If I just port them that last turn, I think I win this game. Or a curse scroll. So close to doing something, but then unsuccessful, ultimately. And gained a bunch of glimmer posts. Yeah, they're over the hump now. It doesn't matter. All right, all right, all right, all right. Got to win game three. They called me annoying. Maybe I do want Grafdigger's Cage, but once again, Ashiok is just as good and actually better at doing the same thing. Okay. Same deck. Let's run it. I imagine people will, pe will ask me about the surgical extraction, like, but Brian, you can waste a cloud post and then get rid of all of them. Yeah, sure. Or I could just draw surgical extraction instead of one of these action spells that actually affects the game on the front. Like the games we've lost so far, the one game we lost against Delver, and then this game we just lost here, uh, they were both like opponents running on fumes. I'm slightly ahead, or we're at parity, and my opponent just draws a good card before me and breaks out of the dam. And I cannot afford to draw surgical extraction in spots like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I will keep this hand. It needs a little bit to go right, but our first appearance of Wasteland in the matchup. Botsies. Oh, I'm taking this pitting needle. I know what you're trying to do with that. Ah, ah, ah. Nice. They have a triple cloud post hand with Paseju. If they want to try to sequence... Well, sick draw. If they want to try to sequence... Okay. Uh, I, I just edict them here. Liliana. Okay. Wasteland. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. And that draw was so perfect because now they're holding up crop rotation if I try to wasteland the cloud post. All right, I need a, a land here. Just a land. Or I'll take a Liliana. She does a similar thing. Okay, Dark Ritual. Liliana. I'm going to discard this Tabernacle. I don't think that's the, the angle we're going to be fighting on. They dumped their force. Okay. And I can't wasteland here because it's just free money into the crop rotation. Here's the other post. Come on, green source. Another Liliana. Oh, well, I'll discard that, I guess. They discarded another Baseju. Yeah, I'm actually just going to get dumpstered here. Didn't find the way forward. Their hand perfectly navigated the crop rotation, or, or navigated my wasteland with their crop rotation. And now they can just do whatever they want. They have eight mana if they choose to accept it. All right, they're still just passing, though. Come on, deck. Something good. There's a saga. I'll take it. And a plus Liliana. They're doing something in response. They changed their mind. I think Assassin's Trophy is better than Crop Rotation for me here. They discarded Bajuka Bog. They have Crop Rotation, one mystery card in their hand. Veil vale of Summer does BTFO a Liliana ultimate, so I'm not like really threatening anything here. I could Wasteland the Besaju. And then see if they rotate for a green source in response. Let me see what I draw first. Another wasteland, okay. Okay, play the wasteland plus the Liliana. I'm losing my trophy here. I just clicked the crop rotation away. I'm not sure why. Okay, I can just send wasteland, force the crop rotation. I can wasteland besage you. I could also just take my chance against their draw step. They clearly haven't done anything. One of these wastelands, though, I think I should start forcing the issue. I'm going to waste a post, because that also taps them out of green. They have a bunch of mana in the pool. That might just be because it's free to do. They might get Eye of Ugin here. Can they activate it? Oh, Yavamaya, what's up? I'm pretty happy to see that, actually. Do I waste the other cloud post, or do I put a construct into play this turn and then take all their permanents next turn? Okay. I am going to play against their one-card hand, and... Hope that my construct can do something. End of turn. Make a construct. I'm not going to make another construct here. Oh, crop rotation. What's up? That's so sick. Uh, that means I can look green off of this Urza Saga and crop rotate it in response to its ability. Busted. Thanks for the green mana. I don't want a Yavamaya of my own. I think I just want a Bayou here. I want to maximize my options as the game moves forward. I could grab another Saga and just keep that going. That's not actually going anywhere, though. Yeah, I'm going to get Bayou. And then my Saga will tutor for Retrofitter Foundry. Or is Curse Scroll better? That's close. Retrofitter's got to be better. Okay, Retrofitter. 
And then I'm going to, in the beginning of combat, Wasteland the Yavamaya. I don't want them to be able to Veil this turn, is why I'm doing this. Then I move to Attackers. Okay, they did end up Veiling. They still have to discard their Lilies Plus, and then their Hellbent. Oh, it's been so long since I played with Retrofitter. It's very obviously the correct decision to get this one. It costs two to make the servo. In my head, it costs three, but that's the untap. Oh, yeah. Pox life. Let me get this chat on the screen. You're annoying, period. Heck yeah. Wah! This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play in round three with a nice Thoughtseize him to Turok curve. I'm definitely going to keep. I just have to decide if I'm going to fire him to Turok first on turn one. Or if I Thoughtseize curve my way up to him. Like Thoughtseize can more strategically pick apart a seven card hand and map out my whole game. Him might just hit two random cards, then whatever. I'm not going to accelerate the saga because I do want to hit him next turn. Okay, I think I'm just going to go basic swamp Thoughtseize. And if there's some graveyard deck, I can play my Nile Spellbomb now. Oh, somebody wants to party. The, the mono black mirror. I'm going to take their Dothy Voidwalker, and then I'll play Mox Diamond discarding Urza Saga, because they have Wasteland, but they only have one black source. Yeah, I'm going to take your Voidwalker, and then I'm going to Mox Diamond discard Saga, play Nile Spellbomb. Now they can Thought Seize my Hymn to Turok. I Wasteland their Takanuma, and we're both kind of not doing anything. This is my kind of magic. Here are all of the things that we expected were going to happen. Thoughtseize, Takanuma. If I draw Life from the Loam right now, I can never lose this game. Liliana of the Veil. Uh, well, none of their cards interact with that. If I don't Wasteland them now, though, then they can Wasteland my Wasteland and they actually do get Black Mana to play the game. That seems so irrelevant, though, compared to slamming a Busto Planeswalker. If they beat me with one basic Swamp, they deserve it. Or one source of mana. They wasteland my wasteland. But depending on what their deck actually does, like if they're just a Dothy Voidwalker, Orcish Bowmaster, Stompy kind of deck, Liliana just deletes creatures as they arrive. There's their wasteland. Reanimate Dothy Voidwalker. Okay. Uh, so that puts my wasteland in the void. Oh, I have that fucking Nile Spellbomb in play. But it doesn't matter. Uh, I have Liliana as well. She can do her thing. You sack a creature. I would rather draw a card off this spell bomb. I did forget it was there, I'm not going to lie. But I also don't care, and would still have made the same decision. Okay, now that I know that they're an actual reanimate strategy, I'm not just going to cycle Nile spell bomb. Dark Ritual kind of sucks. I can cast it, though. It's the same as not casting it. Plus Liliana. Sudden Edict gone. Okay. Dark Ritual burned off. I could have drawn a card to spell bomb and see if I draw something and cast with the ritual mana, but also, who cares? Knowing they're a reanimate deck, I actually do want this Nile spell bomb around. Oh, baby. Life from Malone, get back my things. Really sad that my wasteland's in the void at this point, but still pretty happy with drawing Life from Malone in a spot like this one. There's a Saga. Plus Lily. There's the other Sudden Edict. All those terrible cards we saw in there. On our turn one thought sees are now in their graveyard. There are some flash creatures like Bowmaster or Opposition Agent that can show up and pressure my Liliana. Just a little annoying. Yeah, now they're in just a desperate wasteland loop versus or wasteland top deck mode versus my like from Lolo. They're dark ritualing something. Grief, okay. They're dark ritualing out a creature when I'm hellbent and dies to my onboard Liliana. Deal. I am still not going to pop this spell bomb. I am in a commanding position right now. And the only way I lose is if they scam out something I can't beat. Loam, target, Saga, Basaju, Bayou. Play the Saga. 
delete the grief. Liliana, sheesh. What a legend from from the past. Having Liliana in play is like seeing Catherine Hepburn on the screen or something. It's like, wow. This is how they used to make people. I Do I dredge loam here? Do I want a spell? I think dredging loam is fine. Opponents over there hellbent. A lot of my lands are spells. Found a castle lock, Dwayne. That's what I'm talking about. Plus Liliana. I'm going to discard the bayou. And then they lost a dark ritual. Get back castle lock, Dwayne. Bayou. And irrelevant. Play the bayou. I don't think I need to hang Locked Wayne out in front of Wasteland on a turn where I'm not going to activate it anyway. Not that I'm worried about Wasteland, obviously. I did just turn on all the removal in their deck by having the audacity of putting creatures into play, but these are a pair of 5-5s five showing up quick and strong. I chose to draw instead of Dredge Loam because my hand is already full of lands. Drawing Tabernacle is not great, obviously. I could Mox Diamond get rid of it. I think I like the Retrofitter here. Play Castle plus Lily. Discard the tab, and then attack. I will make the extra damage here. And they are dead on board, top decking, and they can't reanimate stuff because I have Nile Spellbomb. Cool. I feel like I'm just their deck, but also doing good things instead of just random shit. Uh, they're like a mono black stompy scam kind of thing. Do I even have sideboard for this? Graph Digger's Cage could turn off their reanimate engine. And just Assassin's Trophy generically rules. This might be a matchup where Ashiok is actually not worth the squeeze, because opponent, they probably have Troll of Kazadoom in their deck. They might have uh, Entomb if they're that high up on the curve. I don't know even know if they would be. Ashiok doesn't pressure the graveyard at instant speed. Yeah, I think Ashiok's actually out here. And I gotta cut one more card. Their deck has a lot of swamps in it. Spreading algae, it's your time to shine. Mono black. Is there anything I need to needle? We basically saw Dothy Voidwalker. So a lot of creatures that died a curse scroll. I like that. Okay, this is how I'm gonna do it. Let's ride. Oof. The uh lots of black hand with one black source that also requires me to discard my wasteland. If they just duress me and take my mox diamond, I lose. I'm gonna mulligan. This one's a little better. I'll keep it and send one of the small poxes to the bottom. Or I don't need Shouldred's Edict if I'm just pummeling them with poxes. That's that has that card built in. Thoughtseize, all right. What are you worried about here? One of the best draws on my deck right now is spreading algae. No cap. They did take the crop rotation. They are a wasteland deck. We've seen that. Okay. I can play this bayou into a wasteland and give myself a chance to draw a black source and do literally anything next turn. Or I could play Wasteland and be a coward. I'm just going to hope they don't have Wasteland, I guess. Not a Wasteland. Okay, any black source does it. Castle Lock Drain works. Takanuma, Dark Ritual, Mox Diamond. I'm not picky here. Let's just get it going. Null Rod, interesting. Okay. Do I care about that? I mean, it turns off Mox Diamond as a draw. By the way, that hand I mulligan, that was Mox Diamond or Bust. They would have thought seized me and then null rotted the diamond. Very good mulligan on that one. Swap. Yeah. Get it. They have made it clear they don't have Wasteland, and I'm already exposed to it, so I'm just going to keep getting Bayous. And I'm attacking the hand. Grief Bone Master in the bin. It's time for Liliana to take over. As she does. Oh, they have a Wasteland. I think they must have just drawn that. You don't play Null Rod just randomly on a board where you could waste your opponent off their only known mana source. Yeah, that wasteland came off the top. They would have set up a dangerous little web here where they could reanimate Grief, take Liliana, Lily, or cast Liliana out of the void, and then they have me in my own squeeze. What is this? They're playing my Bayou? Interesting. What does that mean? I could just wasteland that. Oh, that means opposition agent. Or they're just worried about smallpox in general. Oh no. <laughs> me. That means opposition agent. Also me. Shit. Draws a fetch land. Okay. I could wasteland my own bayou. I could also shove Liliana onto the stack. I think I have to wasteland the bayou here. If this is worth more to them than having Dothy Boydwalker in play, I gotta like acknowledge it a little bit. Okay. I'm going to grab another Bayou. I can't be firing small poxes on this board right now, I don't think. 
Their deck has reanimate in it, and mine does not. So they have a one mana way to really break this open. Okay. Heck yeah. Wasteland, Bayou, Verdant Catacombs back to my hand. Life from the Loam showing up when we need it most. I'm still going to play around Opposition Agent. I just have the fear. Oh, they haven't jammed it in yet, so maybe not. Not trudging Loam here. <laughs> and just drew one anyway. It's like dredging it, but also you get to have two. I don't know. I will invest my Wasteland and then play Liliana and then plus Liliana and discard Burden Catacombs. Now they're under real pressure again. Leyline of the Void discarded. Okay, cool. A card that is medium fine against me on turn zero and absolutely horrendous anytime after that. I don't need to dredge Loam because I'm already holding one. <laughs> there's the other one. All right, well, there's all of the Loams that I play. I can actually smallpox first here, and then pick up the land that I pox away. Okay, pox first. Interesting. There's mana in the in the pool. What does it do? Like flashing in a creature here, that just dies. I'm going to discard a life from the loam. Sacrifice wasteland, and then I can cast my loam, get back all my lands, and then just pass through faces. And if they floated mana to play a creature, Liliana gets to eat it. Oh no, an opposition agent. If only I had read that card or thought about it at all throughout this entire game. Put it in the graveyard, please. Cool. Okay, and I can pox them to basically nothing next turn, and then we're, we're cooking. I am going to dredge a loam. I would like to refill here. Loam, target. Uh, can I do everything? Yeah, I can. All right. Loam, target the three lands I have. And then... Flavored and Catacombs, grab my last fetchable out of the deck. Small pox. My opponent will have no hand, no one land, no hand. Plus Lily, discard a Marsh Flats, that doesn't even do anything anymore. And Children's in the bin. We got the hooks in. I am going to dredge Loam. I'm looking for Ursa Saga to start winning this game. The Seiju, Tabernacle, Verdant Catacombs to my hand. Plus Lily, discard the Catacombs. I'm not going to besage you Nulra, because I don't care. And you cannot besage you a Swamp. I can Wasteland that. And I'm just going to do that right now. Or, it doesn't matter, they're helping. Never mind. I don't need to play around anything. I'm going to start taking draws. Okay, I found a Nurturing Beatland, that card's pretty good. Wasteland your Takanuma. Draw a card with Beatland. I will Dredge Loam here. Beatland, Wasteland, and... I don't care about Yabamaya. Plus Lily. Discard the Marsh Flats. Yeah, we're in the dregs here. I just have to find a way to win. It's going to be pretty hard to lose, though. I'm going to decline the Loams. Heat land. I'm just going to draw an actual card here. More Wastelands. Plus Lily. They discarded their own Lily. How insulting. A Wasteland. Oh, no. I've decided I'm just locked in on Dredging Loam forever. Wasteland your wasteland, you wasteland a bayou in response, or you just don't even bother. I respect that. Plus Lily, discard Marsh Flats. Change my mind. I'm back on drawing cards. In like a small pox just to clear this last land, a, a thought cease doesn't matter. Each player discards a card. I don't think I need this tabernacle right now. And I'll draw a normal ass card. Spreading algae, there we go. Put it in. You're in trouble now. The hooks are in. Insult injury. Another swamp. It would be a shame if somebody tapped that. My Rashad and Port is not in my graveyard. Drawing cards. Found a curse scroll. That has text on it. Each player discards. Gonna lose my thought seize. Now I'm trying to actively get. Oh, wait. It doesn't have text on it because of Null Rod. Finally, Null Rod's done something. Heck yeah. Tap that land. Him to Tarak me. Oh, that's cool. The algae ends up back in my hand before the hymn resolves. They have a chance out of this. Okay, uh, hymn resolves. Leave my algae alone. They missed the algae. We did it. Oh, they did hit the besage though, but I can dredge loam and get that back. I did kind of want that. Because now that's my win condition. Heatland, besage you, wasteland. If I can besage you the null rod first, then ultimate Liliana and kill a swamp. Actually, I think that's worth doing. Ultimate Liliana. The world's worst stone rain. But it's still a stone rain. Of the Captain Jack Sparrow meme. 
but I am a Stone Rain. I'm going to leave the Wastelands in my hand. Just multiple cards with the same name while I have Curse Scroll in play is good. Next turn, my hand might just be all Wastelands. I just have to make sure I don't deck myself before I can deal 16 damage. Which means I'm going to stop Dredging Loam and drawing cards. Plus Lily. I'm going to discard the other Lily. I'm going to scroll them naming Wasteland. They took two. We did it. And then I'll play a Wasteland. Nine minutes on the clock. Plenty of time. Oh, Pithing Needle. That's fine. I have a Seiju in my graveyard. They name Curse Scroll. I just unlock it. They name Liliana. I could even ignore it for a while. Okay, they did name Scroll. I'm going to have to dredge loam to get back to Seiju. I could even do that now while my mana's chilling. Found a castle locked waiting in there. Life from the loam. Target. The Seiju. Nurturing Peatland. Castle locked Wayne. I have a Takanuma here too. Do I have anything in the graveyard that I care about? Okay, play Lockthwain plus Liliana. I'm going to discard, I think, Children's Edict. And then Beseju, the Needle. And then spread the swamp that they find. Oh, baby. This is Magic the Gathering. I got eight minutes to activate Curse Scroll, or successfully activate Curse Scroll seven times. Crop rotation. That just grabs Urza Saga, and then we're we're done. Play the Peatland, float colorless, or I should uh, I should plus Liliana before I do anything else here, just to make sure I don't get BTFO'd somehow. We got the hurts so much in the chat. Yeah, it does. I believe you. I'm discarding my Wasteland, float a colorless, crop rotate that Wasteland, Urza Saga. Now I have an actual win condition. Scrollia with my floating mana. Alright, we got a please put an end to this, and then a thank you when I activated Curse Scroll and turned it as a saga. Found it. I'm not going to draw cards with Lockthwain. I don't think it matters. Though, ah, yeah, whatever. Who am I? Who is this boss and roll who was about to not draw a card when they could? Saga will kill them so fast from here that it just doesn't even matter. I don't need to worry about Curse Scroll density of card names. What a delightful phrase that is. Curse scroll density of card names. Those are words I just said. I'm going to discard the Hymn to Tarak here. And I'm actually going to... Oh shit. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. I think the way that I do this is... I play Mox Diamond holding priority. And then respond to that by hitting them with Curse Scroll. Okay. Takanuma Abandoned Mire. They take two. And then this makes my constructs bigger, and we can get out of here faster. All right. And now I'm hellbent, so every card I draw is two damage from Curse Girl forever. Cool thing about this spot is Spreading Algae doesn't care how it dies. As long as it goes to the graveyard, it's like, yeah, I'll come back. So I can still ultimate Liliana if I want to Stone Rain them again. Retrofitter Foundry still in the deck. Curse Scroll, go upstairs. Nile Spell Bomb. Play Nile Spell Bomb. Make a construct or a servo, whatever these are. Make a servo. Stack you for seven. I couldn't find one more damage. That's disappointing. And Lily is going to go ultimate here. Oh, this is a weird display. Do they know which one the algae's on? Okay. Well, I still get it back. This game was a textbook pox misery squeeze. Wow, let's keep it going. If you're looking to run a CEDH or 1v1 tournament, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With Command Tower's intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle deckless submission and player management with just a few clicks. Players just need to scan the event's QR code for access to the full tournament bracket, including seamless pairings and real-time standing updates. Take the guesswork out of tournament organizing. Try Command Tower for your next event. On the play in round four with another sad, no colored mana sources hand in a mulligan. This one is slow and steady. It's not necessarily where I want to be, but it's not not where I want to be. I think I keep this hand and bottom spreading algae. It's either spreading algae or tabernacle, and basically it's do I think my opponent is a natural swamp deck or not? And I have no way to know. The L bottom, the LG. Opponent kept seven. I think I'm just going to play Wasteland and pass here. 
Because if they are a wasteland deck, I don't want them to get any of my other lands. And if they are just like Volcanic Island Delver here, I can waste them, play Tabernacle, and immediately just flip the script. Mox Amber. Uh-oh. What deck has Mox Amber in it? This is crazy. Okay. A legendary wizard of some kind. Emery. Oh, well. Mox Amber is uh, pretty good with her. They can draw multiple cards with baubles every turn. That Mox Amber is actually saving them. They did almost exactly what I asked them to, except they were like, I have a Mox too, by the way. You know some of the most broken cards in Magic's history? I have one of those. I have to decide now if Wasteland Tabernacle is worth doing, or if I just want to get Liliana in, because they can bobble every turn. Good chance this is a Saga deck. And Bomber, that Mox Amber, messing me up. Okay, I'm going to play Bayou and pass the turn. I think I need to get Liliana in, answer the Emery, and then worry about anything else that's going on. They're going into the, the Bobble Factory. They are a Saga strategy. I was right. I could have wasted that in response to its trigger, but again, I am trying to play Liliana here. Oh, that's fun. I could now Wasteland the Saga, Natal the Emery, and play Tabernacle. Wow, that's that did just change things a bit. Okay, I'm going to pay the Needle and see if it resolves. Bobbling me in response. Okay, I'm going to name Emery Lurker of the Lock. And then Wasteland their Urza Saga and play the Tabernacle. Okay, we found a way through this little annoying squeeze. The Mox Amber taps for blue as long as they keep Emery around. They basically get to filter Cavern of Souls mana into blue. I see the Agatha Soul Cauldron in the graveyard, but using Pin the Needle on Emery when this is some kind of Soul Cauldron combo deck is a little unfortunate. But I think that squeeze was exactly the kind of small ball, multifaceted squeeze that I'm looking for while I try to get out of this. Another saga. Okay. Might as well attack. She's in there. There you go. Mox Diamond, that's kind of the nuts. Okay, that means I could play Urza Saga here and play Liliana. If I had played Rashad and Port, I actually could have time walked a whole turn out of Constructs. But I think putting Liliana in the stack is better. And I would rather have Nurturing Bee Land in my hand. Liliana's here. And she is a Stone Rain because this turns off Mox Amber. They currently have one colorless mana and one wizard mana. They found another mana. They found another another mana. Five cards in their hand. That's kind of a lot. Oh, if they Urza, that would be pretty powerful here. Okay. Well, that's a good one. Am I dead somehow? How far is this train going? This would be a great turn to draw. Shouldred's Edict. Marsh Flats. I would rather have Nurturing Pete Land than Marsh Flats. Plus the Lily. They discarded another Emery. They can make a 3 3 blocker here. And they do have to pay for these things. The Construct can tap to pay for itself, which is probably just worse than tapping the Cavern to keep your 4-4 around. Okay, their Saga ticks up here. I'm going to make my token in response to their search. Because I do want the creature, and if they just get Pithing Needle and name Saga, then they're way ahead here. This match is going to be really interesting, no matter what ends up happening, because I'm a deck trying to get those small ball squeezes, and they're a deck trying to break out of small ball squeezes. There will be games like this one, where the Mox Amber just completely borks my curve, and then there will be, well, I mean, I don't know, but there will likely be games where I like Wasteland their Seed of the Synod, and then Mox Opal doesn't work, and then they can't cast Emery to turn on Mox Amber, and then they just have nothing. Cool tension. They found an Aether Spell Bomb. Alright, that's smart. They can tap it to itself, bounce my construct, clear Liliana. Then I'm just sort of farting around behind a, a tabernacle and hoping that Urza somehow doesn't beat tabernacle, which it obviously does. Okay, I draw for turn. Smallpox. Ooh, all right, well, I will not make a construct then because it's going to die. I'm going to get Retrofitter Foundry. And if I cast the Smallpox, I sack the Nurturing Peatland, probably. So I need to float mana first then. Or I just tap Nurturing Peeling to cast the spell that I'm holding. Duh. Alright. Oh wait, I don't have black floating. Shit. Alright, I do need actually both of these. Okay. 
smallpox. I don't like giving up the redraw, but I do think that if I take too long tapping Nurturing Peatland every turn to make a servo to block, uh, that damage is going to add up more than I want. Ooh, they sack their Urza. They are trying to get it done with what they got here. I respect that. Sacking the Urza, though, is... That's a mana engine gone. And now they can't activate their other Saga because they need all their mana to keep their constructs around. I mean, their, their pair of 5-5s five is probably just going to get the game one. Maybe they're not too worried about it. A okay, block. What are my good draws here? Basaju. Not Verdant Catacombs, that's for sure. Okay, they're paying to keep their jerks. I should fetch in response. Or oh, wait, that hasn't triggered yet. Now I should fetch in response. Get a Bayou. Uh, I guess I was supposed to make my server in response if I'm worried about any of that stuff. Uh, any Pithing Needle stuff. Walking Ballista X equals 1. Uh, that's lethal. Okay, cool. GG. Yeah, that, that Mox Amber start just just got over the where it needed to go. Caracas is dope. Emery, Urza, get those out of here. Pajuka Bog's interesting. They clearly use their graveyard with Soul Cauldron and Emery at least a little bit. I don't think I need Basic Swamp in the matchup. I actually don't want Pajuka Bog. Uh, I'll use Ashiok to do that. Still like Ashiok. They're an Urza Saga deck. Just stuffing the Saga tutors is good. They're not attacking my mana, and I'm bringing in a land. It, I am down one black source, but I think hoarding out a swamp is fine. All of my artifacts look good here. Curse Scroll appears to be the worst of them. That is also my win condition. If they were to, like, surgical extraction my Urza Sagas, I would have to win with Retrofitter. That's in the maybe pile. I'll come back to that. Spreading algae. I think anytime your opponent isn't naturally on swamps, you could shave one of those. I don't play Null Rod or anything. I have too many artifacts in my own deck to support that. Okay, fine. Curse Scroll is out. Embrace the misery. Let's run it. Okay, keep this. I can Thoughtseize into Get Life from the Loam going. Their deck does seem really soft to Wasteland. Let me see it. What do you got? Ooh, Rona. Uh, Phyrexian Devourer is their combo. Combo. Comber. What is a combo? Combo. Uh, I believe I take the Emery here. Everything else will take at least one turn to come into play, and I can Wasteland in the meantime. Yeah, I think Emery has the best high roll possibility here. This deck is cool, though. I appreciate what's going on over here. I have played something similar on the channel, I think. They all blur together, but I'm pretty sure I did that. Wasteland, your Volcanic Island, and pass the turn. I wonder how many island-type lands they have in their deck for this Paseju. We saw Cavern of Souls, Seed of the Synod, and Urza Saga. There's a cavern, still hiding that saga. Oh, Lotus Petal, that would have cast the Emery. They can play Rona here. This is a great turn to draw a Swamp. Come on, deck, Black Source, please let me have it. Always had it. Small Pox. I'm going to discard Life from the Loam. And Sacrifice Nurturing Pea Land. They discarded the Devourer, that's where they want that anyway. And I need to hope they don't draw Graveyard Hate right now. There's Saga. Gonna dredge this Loam. Saga. Wasteland. Peat Land. Castle Lock Thwain. Okay. Go. This, this is funny because even if they draw the land and get the patches in and they're like, okay, I'm ahead of Wasteland, I have a second Smallpox, but they know they're dead. Cool. Pox Life. A uh, Plague Engineer can kill Patches of Hulahan, uh, both in combat with Death Touch and proactively just name whatever it is, which I would have to look up if I'm on this plan. I think my deck is just good against Patches anyway. I got nine Edicts in my deck. Yeah, that's not it. I'm just going to hit Submit. This is the deck that I have. Ooh, the Caracas is cool. I mean, this is obviously a six lander, but... The thing about this deck is many of the lands are spells. Caracas slows down Emery, but Seiju is removal against basically all cards in their deck, and Lockwain is a refill. Saga's a threat. I'm going to keep this. And if they're on a Patches draw and not an Emery draw, this might get overrun. But even then, I just got to get to the Liliana. Opponent's on six. 
already down a car doing my work for me. Saga. Paddle. Please play Emery. Please play Emery. Rona's fine too. Yeah! Using an actual card from your hand, the Lotus Petal, to put this card into play that's about to be gone. Boing. Okay. I hope that was devastating. They mulled a six and then discarded a Lotus Petal. They are going to get to do Saga stuff here. At least a little bit of Saga stuff. I can set up a curve where I Beseju the Saga. Or do I want to Beseju the Ancient Tomb? That's probably better. But they get a search. Their deck's full of cool cards. Yeah, this is actually close. If they can search for some kind of artifact, we know about Mox Amber, we know about Mox Opal. Those are all things that could come out of this. I think I'm going to go for the overall Mana Denial plan, though. Blow up the Ancient Tomb. They only get one construct. They do get to search, but then they have whatever land they search for right now. And, oh wow, is the Vulk in their hand? They just didn't even search. That was fucked up. Okay, I hope I don't die to whatever they tutor for, but that worked out extremely well. I think the answer to my query is they have one. They have one land with types. And it's currently in their hand. Backup Saga. Patches. Amber triggers patches. Okay, so I just parade Liliana's onto the board until they're out of creatures here, is the plan. Through a Bayou. Lily. Sack a creature. They got rid of the patches, kept the construct. They can keep making constructs here. And I'm just going to have to keep bashing them. Wow, if they ignore Liliana, that would be cool. They are ignoring Liliana. They're trying to get me dead. That means I can take one of the two cards from their hand. It might be a card they don't want anyway, and that's why they're doing this. Oh, I'm going to plus discard a Vulcan... Or a Verdant Catacombs. I almost said Volcanicombs. Not a card that I'm aware of. The rona has gone. Play my own Saga. And fire the other Lily in. Just take some pressure off here. Whether they make the construct in response or just make a new one doesn't matter. It's the same shit. They end up with a 4-4 either way. And next turn, I could start making blockers, or I can loam Baseju and start killing their things. Was that better than Liliana this turn? No, I think having the Bladeswalker in play is better. If they Pithing Needle Baseju here, that's actually really good for them. This is going to be close. Oh, I need to find a Tabernacle, actually. I'm, I'm in quite a bit of trouble, in fact. Aether Spellbomb. Or no, I'm... Okay, no, in my head, I forgot that I had already killed a Construct. I think we're doing just fine. I've got plus Liliana. Each player discards a card. Just keep them soft while I'm doing everything else I'm doing. Discard Verdant Catacombs. And then they lost a Soul Cauldron. I can, if I Dark Ritual... Okay, so I have to play Castle Lockdwain first. Because I need two green at the end of this chain. Just determining if I can activate Saga and Lone Besaju here. So three, four, five, six total mana outside of the Saga, which is exactly the right amount. Okay, Dark Ritual, Life from the Loam, target my lands. Besaju's in my hand to make a construct. Oh, uh, no, I'm not dead for Xaxes. Uh, they have to sack the spell bomb, which makes their creatures smaller. And then I kill one of them. They need two artifacts out of their hand here to, to beat me. But I have made them discard some artifacts over the last couple turns. We are on the precipice here. This is going to be so close. Both the cards in their hand have to be playable artifacts, and they need to be able to activate or either bobble on top of it. That's a good start. Please play Emery or some shit I don't care about. They have a spell bomb. They're down to six. Okay, I'm going to one here. Kill a construct, go to one. They can't tutor a artifact land with that. There are no artifact islands to my knowledge. I'm at one. Agatha Soul Cauldron. There's not a walking bliss in the Great Bird, is there? There is not. Okay. Why didn't that come out pre combat? What just happened? Did they just throw? They just looked at the game and said, no, I don't want to win it. Okay, they're exiling my life from the loam. They literally had lethal, though. What's going on? All right. Well, they have some graveyard hate, but I have a Liliana on two. 
Oh, I can't cast that smallpox. That's really funny. And I can never activate this castle lock the either. Okay. Make a construct. Tutor. Do I want retrofitter? They probably want to needle the soul cauldron. And just don't let that happen ever. I do have a really spicy, dangerous line here. And if they ever draw or find walking blist, I just lose. So I could get Retrofitter Foundry plus Liliana, try to have multiple blockers for a turn. I think Liliana is my only way that I'm still playing this game. Yeah, I'm going to get Retrofitter here and I'm going to plus Lily. I have three cards in my hand that just don't work. I'll discard Smallpox and hope that they don't rip the heat right now. They do have a bobble. They get two looks here. I'm dead to Ballista at any point. That was just always going to be true. Even if I proactively needle Ballista, they could just play it for zero, put it in the graveyard, exile with Soul Cauldron, and then Construct would have its abilities. But it's a different card. They could also give Construct the abilities of Rona and do some looting here. Okay, they are looting. This does not untap if they play a legend. That's that's just Rona text. That's not an activated ability. It's a trigger. Agatha Soul Cauldron doesn't do everything. Just a lot. Oh no, they drew Urza. That's bad. Okay, Urza's here. Uh, I am dead to a lot of stuff again. And let me tell you about uh, Caracas versus Urza. Um, oh, I can get the Urza out of play, actually. I can bounce Urza plus Liliana, but then I'm dead to these constructs without a real plan to get out from under them. That's that's not it. If they start flipping with Urza's, though, they have one, two, three mana. Oh, they actually don't have mana to play Urza. Yeah, like, if I minus Liliana and they just sack Urza and keep their bigos, that's the same problem that I was just having. I think I have to Caracas the Urza minus the Lily. Okay, minus Liliana, kill one of the big ones. Wasteland, the Seed of the Synod. Just trying to reduce their artifact count as well here. And attack for three. And I have two blockers. And they can loot away Urza, and that attack could have been for four. I'm just deeply in my own sauce here. They can loot away Urza, then give Construct the abilities of Urza, which include both mana and flipping cards off your deck. I hope missing that damage doesn't end up killing me. Yeah, they are looting. Discarded a petal. Oh, okay, so they are able to refire Urza. My Gambit did not pay off here. What does the game look like if I plus last turn instead? Yeah, the Soul Cauldron is the problem. If the Constructs are just Constructs, I'm okay with, with whatever. But if they are Urza's and they just get to start flipping cards, that doesn't actually solve my problems. And I think that more artifacts is more important than bigger artifacts. I could make this into a flyer and then next turn make it a 4-4. But I already have a 4-4 that I'm not really using. Takanuma, that can get back a different Liliana. But Agatha Soul Cauldron can exile it in response. Okay, well, I have to do the Urza trick now. Or the Caracas trick. Each player discards a card. Burden Catacombs is gone. And I actually can't even afford to attack Anuma. I should probably just play this as a land. Might need a bunch of mana at some point. Okay, passing the turn. Dead to Walking Bliss at any point. Their constructs can be Urzas, both of them. They're both Urzas, they're both Ronas. They are over the hump here. A Life from Alone blowing up Soul Cauldron actually gets me to stable here. Hey, they're looting. The looting is scary because they have I win buttons in their deck, but it's also nice that they're not bashing me for seven. They're deep in the tank on this loot, which I don't know if that's good or bad. It means both of their cards have text, but it also means that there's not an obvious one that wins the game. They discarded an Emery. Oh, that Haywire Might sucks. Okay. They discarded Emery. They can make their creatures into Emery's. And what does Emery do? They have patches, baubles, Aether Spellbomb. Yikes. Okay. Yep. Bad news, everybody. And they are targeting the Spellbomb. And my tentative hold on this game is sliding away. Life from the Loam. Still a great draw here. 
and I believe I should continue to make 1-1 one, one servos. Just more is better than big or flying in this spot. Come on, deck. Light from the loam. Oh my goodness, we did it. Wasteland, Baseju, Urza Saga. Green and the Caracas, I guess I tap here. That was great. And the Soul Cauldron's currently tapped. That was a huge find. Okay, I have to Baseju the Soul Cauldron. I'm just going to light that up, clear it out. Right now, no questions asked. It's gone. And their creatures lose all the extra abilities that they had. Why are there two volcanic islands in your deck all of a sudden? Isn't this the same game where I hit their ancient tomb with Poseidon and they didn't search anything? Weird. Okay, fine. I guess that's allowed. It's weird, but it is legal. I could minus Liliana to clear probably Haywire Might and then just go into Trump mode. I think Saga is better than Wasteland here. That moves my game forward meaningfully, and I also think that having Liliana around is worth doing. Discard the Verdant Catacombs. And can I attack with Construct here? I think I can. They have three attackers. I have four blockers. And this is the one they want to bounce anyway. Or they have three attackers plus a removal spell, and I have four blockers. I am living on the edge here with this attack, but I do have to get this game won. Their deck has Walking Ballista in it somewhere. Okay, they took the five. Again, missed the damage. They could be at eight right now. I'm just so in the in the zone. Okay, they're not trying to remove my, move my creatures. They're trying to spike the I win combo. I respect that. Oh no, there's mana in the pool, and it's weird colors. It's just a ballista for one. Goblin engineer. Okay, that's bad. That becomes a soul cauldron next turn, and they entomb ballista now. And this all happens a turn before I can. Oh, they foretold a card. What the hell is that? I genuinely have no idea what that is. They should probably be bashing here. Just work out these servos a bit. Okay, they are committed to comboing. End of turn, make a servo. If I dredge loam, I could kill Agatha Soul Cauldron. And then, like, this stuff doesn't even work. A okay, loam target. Do I want to waste them first? Okay, time to count my actual effects. 1, 2, activate Saga. 1, 2, cast Loam. 1, 2, activate... Nope, I can't waste them. Alright. 1, 2, Life from the Loam. Beseju, Catacombs. Catacombs. And I have to play Wasteland as a mana source. Because my other lands kill me. And I have to minus Liliana on them. I just have to start working through their, their pieces over there. Hey, why are Might's gone? The Construct can attack here, because I get another one, and this is the biggest thing. Okay, they're double blocking. Okay. Yeah, I guess I just let damage resolve here. Making it bigger doesn't actually change anything, and just having mana up to either Saga or Retrofitter or whatever, like, if they don't commit to the Soul Cauldron line here. Blue, blue, no, they drew an X spell. No, come on! Uh, oh my god. We had everything covered, and they just drew another walking ballista. Jeez. All right. Well, GG, I guess. I guess I'll make them play it out. And they probably just ping me here. That, that is the intelligent thing to do. All right. We did all that. We had everything under control, turning the tides to stability, and then they got over the finish line with a hot rip at three and a half minutes left on their clock. Tight match. On to the final round. The official Bosch and Roll Island Ponder Keep shirt is now available for pre-order through Coalesce Apparel and will release in early December. These will sell out and take time to restock. The holidays are coming up fast. Place your pre-orders for yourself and the Bosch and Roll fans in your life today. Coalesce is the best magic apparel on the market with awesome new designs coming out all the time. Use code Bosch and Roll at checkout for 10% off your order at coalesceapparel.shop. On the play for the final round, positive record is locked, playing for the 4-1. Trophy just narrowly snatched from our hands. I'm going to keep this hand, and obviously it needs another black source, but I'm doing stuff. And I think I fetched the basic, and that turns off Loam as a good draw. All right, I, just, I would like to be able to remove a creature if they're a Wasteland deck. How about that? Oh, there's a Muxus amongst us. 
I recently learned a cool trick, which is that you can kill Namesticker Goblin in response to a trigger, and then they don't get the mana. So I'm actually going to take Ringleader here, because I can Edict the Goblin, and then Wasteland their Ancient Tomb, and then they're just way out of this game. There's the Cavern. Please don't have a Lackey. Okay, uh, Rashad and Port is cool. I can also just Wasteland their Cavern now. What about that? That line loses to Simeon Spirit Guide, though. I think I want to just play the Wasteland, let them commit the, the name Goblin, and then get over this hump, and then we'll figure out the rest later. There's the Tomb. Here's the Goblin. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. That one, please. I'm significantly less furious that this card exists now that I know that that's how this works. Okay, Wasteland the Ancient Tomb, play Rashad and Port, and then let's let's just chill for a minute. Just a little prison deck. Gun of the Bugbear, coming in untapped. Messed up. Oh, Mox Diamond, what's up? As much as I like Tabernacle, this Mox Diamond is too good to, to pass up in this Hymn to Turok situation. Pew pew. Muxus is gone, a second ringleader is gone, and Curse Scroll actually just hard locks Name Goblin as long as I can keep one card in my hand. Another Ancient Tomb. Please don't have a third ringleader. Stop. Stop it now. Oh my god. They have four mana in their pool. This is outrageous. And hit two Name Sticker Goblins. God damn it. Okay. Those are all things that just happened. My Tabernacle's in the graveyard, which is the card I would want here. Uh, I guess Rodenport doesn't help much anymore, but crop rotation costs... So, if I float a colorless, crop rotate, and then spend two mana, I can curse scroll deterministically. I think I have to play to that. And then I just don't get to Rodenport anybody. Are there any lands in my deck that I would want access to proactively here? Just the Tabernacle, thanks for asking. Okay. I'm gonna pass the turn. It's probably just Urza Saga and try to get bigger than them. Okay, here's the Goblin. In response, float, crop rotation. Gotta be Urza Saga. Urza Saga. Learn how to make mana. And then curse scroll this idiot. Naming Nihil Spellbomb. Okay, that's gone. No mana there. Oh no! Alright, opponent is uh, ripping hot. If you watch my league with this deck, you know that I have no right to complain about this, but, uh, woof. Yeah, that ringleader was fucked. Three ancient tombs. After I, I mapped out the whole game around, like, okay, I'm going to take ringleader and then kill their ancient tomb. And then they're like, ringleader, ancient tomb. By the way, also ancient tomb. And life from the loam for tabernacle doesn't even help here. Oof, that was tough. Okay. Tough beats. Uh, we've got plague engineers in here. They don't do a lot on their own. Most of the goblins are X2 in this deck, but they are creatures I can put into play. Certainly better than Nile Spellbomb or Pithing Needle. Graph Digger's Cage stops Muxus from triggering. Well, it triggers, but goblins don't come into play. Probably worth having. Ashiok doesn't matter here. Man, I had such high hopes for them, and they just did not deliver. Spreading Algae out for Assassin's Trophy. I think I'm just off it. We will not be wallow algaing this deck. They're a, a brutal fast creature combo deck in a situation where the four ones on the line. I'm not messing around with this. Turn one Liliana. Not bad. I am going to keep my hand. And the only thing missing here is a green source, which is actually pretty devastating to be missing. This life from Lobe is really important. But I am still going to send it. Dark Ritual, Liliana. Plus. And I'm going to lose the Urborg here. They discarded a land. That's scary. Ancient Tomb. Chrome Mox. Good, we're dead. <laughs> oh no. Goblin Matron. Name Sticker Goblin. Four. Okay, that's the worst number. Ringleader. Shit, that's a really good card. Hit only Skirk Prospector. But this does get to Bash Liliana. There's a Saga versus Wasteland. I think I minus Lily and then Wasteland them. I just have to take damage and resources off the board. Okay, Wasteland, take out the Ancient Tomb. I could have got Saga going tall there, but I think just fewer goblins in play, especially with that Skirk Prospector available. I just basically knocked three mana off their board. 
There's the Prospector. My opponent, I should know not to mess with their Ancient Tombs. They just have an infinite number. Okay, uh, well, Plague Engineer's in my hand. This is a massive moment of, can I draw any land at all? And especially if it's green. They currently on board have five mana represented. Just pass the turn. Don't do more stuff. Knock it off. Quit playing cards. Battlecry Goblin. All right, deck, please. This is the moment. Give me a land. Oh, no, another green card. We're so dead. All right. Maybe the wasteland was aggressive. I don't know. But now, now we're just fucked. I could still draw a land and get Plague Engineer into play. Kills Prospector on arrival. Weakens the rest of the squad. Makes Battlecry Goblin a lot worse because the Goblin token doesn't exist. But that was a very important turn to get on this board. I'm already playing from behind. And they have another rain later. Magus of the Moon works fleet to the bottom. Vishalik Mon's the only thing hit here. Okay, five damage. For fuck's sake, deck. I need the land right now. Right now, buddy. Deliver it. <laughs> what an insult. I don't have an artifact that taps for green without a land already in my hand. I could get Retrofit or Block for a turn, but I'm dead. GG's. That opponent certainly had my number. Okay. Pox. LG Pox. I mean, spreading LG was the worst card in the deck. Like, as far as a lot of these games came really close, a lot of them came down to just missing land number three or color source number one, or there was just really thin things, or it was like essential top deck here breaks it open for either player. And spreading LG does eat up slots like that. The Rashad and Port is only in the deck because of the spreading LG also which could just be another Urza Saga or another Fetchland. Like, colored sources were a genuine problem. I mulliganed a lot of hands, and if you're not loaming, you kind of fall behind really quickly with this deck. But as far as Algae Pox builds go, I was pretty happy with this. If you want to be a boring cop about it, you can just put a couple Bowmasters in here. Normally you don't want, like, hate bears like Dothy Voidwalker and Oppo in a deck like this, because you're going to end up smallboxing them away. And, but... Bowmaster bringing its own fodder is pretty nice. Ashiok is the flex slot. I thought they would be better than they were. They just did not show up at any point. Uh, the only time they showed up, I drew both of them when I had two mana. But the three drop slot is always the one with the most tension. The core of this deck felt really good, though. It was nice to be back in the Pox saddle. Luca, thank you for asking me to revisit. Wow, Luigi Pox. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time.